Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Enhancing Restaurant Operations with a Best of Breed Approach to Technology, presented by Revel Systems in partnership with Restaurant Business. I'm Abby Lewis. I'm the Vice President of Content Strategy in the Food Services Vertical of Informa Connect, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Throughout our presentation, we encourage you to interact with our speakers by clicking the Ask button at the bottom of your screen. We will answer questions live at the end of the presentation. Our speakers today are Chris Leibier. Chris is the Chief Strategy Officer for Revel Systems and Derek Tun. Derek is the Vice President of Analytics for Black Rock Coffee Bar. Today, we're going to discuss the current landscape of restaurant technology and workforce challenges and the growing demand for best-in-class digital capabilities. We are thrilled to have Derek with us today from Black Rock Coffee Bar, who will discuss the best of breed approach and the impact that that, that strategy has had on its operations and revenue. Additionally, we're going to go ahead and learn about some best practices and tips, strategies and tactics for implementing best in class solutions, including harnessing integrations and utilizing flexible platforms. You're also going to hear about tactics for streamlining order management and fulfillment to improve speed of service and minimize errors. Our experts will help us understand how to reduce customer and staff wait times and enable direct customer orders. And finally, we'll talk about labor savings potential related to tablet or handheld device adoption. I'm gonna go ahead now and turn it over to Chris, who's gonna be kicking off today's presentation. Take it away, Chris. Thank you, Abby and Restaurant Business, much appreciated. Thank you, Derek, for being with us today. And most importantly, thanks to all of you who are listening in or who will listen to us later. We appreciate your time. Uh, speaking of time, just one housekeeping thing to mention up front. Uh, mm -hmm. I prefer a, a swift and speedy mm -hmm. webinar, not a long one. So uh, Derek and I will probably chat together for maybe 15 minutes, 20 tops. And then we're going to go to questions, uh, which I think are always one of the best parts of this exercise. So um, hang in with us for that and throw your questions in uh, if you got any along the way. So. Let me kind of tee the subject up. We're definitely going to talk about, you know, tech itself and in the best of breed approach with integrations. But the question is, why are we talking about this? That's, I think, fundamental to the discussion. I think we all know that um, it's it's challenging to be a restaurant operator right now. I guess I suppose it always has been, but maybe now more than ever, particularly on the cost side of things. Labor costs are through the roof, uh, real estate, uh, the cost of food, you name it. Uh, it is it is tough uh, business sledding out there. And if you are going to be successful, you fundamentally got to get more efficient and you got to drive more revenue under your roof, period. And really the best way to do that in any industry that's usually um, comes up against the task of getting more efficient, technology is usually the way that's solved. So um, I think technology is going to be the key. Uh, to getting where we all need to be to having a successful industry. And and I personally think that we are just right now seeing the tip of the iceberg with more and more tech coming in. Uh, I think in the next five years, we're just absolutely going to see a uh, an enormous amount of tech, front of house, back of house, in the kitchen, in the drive through voice, AI, you name it. Um, and it's going to be a challenge to get all that in. But at the end of the day, it's going to make the industry much more successful, profitable, and you know, it's a, a great consumer experience as well. So the reason we're talking about the best of breed approach to integrations is if we're going to have all this tech coming in, you have got to get ready with a platform and a methodology that's going to allow you to bring this tech in easily, quickly, um, and make the best use out of it. So. Hence, hence the topic and, and why it's so important. So uh, we've got BlackRock with us today. They actually are, you know, they're a very recent customer. So Derek's experience is gonna be super fresh. And I think they're a perfect example of really kind of the whole range of the industry. Um, he's gonna tell you how big they are and they, they are growing right now. Um, but whether you're a 10 site chain, a 50 site chain, a 250 site chain, um, these topics are super relevant to you uh, in terms of getting ready for the future of tech in this space. So I'm so glad Derek is going to share exactly what he has just been through. So um, let's flip to the next slide. And um, 
I want to just throw one provocative stat out there uh, and then we'll let Derek start to give us the examples. But uh, in the last 10 years, we, we actually pulled the data up in our cloud-based system and um, the API calls, which are really what supports this ecosystem of partners, is um, increased 300% in that time frame. You, you might say, oh, that's not huge for 10 years. It's, it's a lot though. And we actually also looked and saw that in general, 10 years ago, people had one to two integrations. Now our average number of integrations is actually six to seven. I personally believe in the next five years, that's gonna go up to 15 to 20. I think every single rooftop is gonna have 15 to 20 integrations in them. And that's why it's gonna be critical to have a, a platform and a methodology to do that effectively. So um, let's talk about a case study now. And I think Derek, where you need to start us is first, just explain who BlackRock is, this is a business, not the tech, um, so that our audience knows who we're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks so much for having me, Chris. Excited to be here today. Um, so BlackRock Coffee Bar, we were founded in 2008 in Portland, Oregon. And from there have grown to approximately 135 retail locations across seven states. Uh, we're known for just premium coffee drinks, for our teas, uh, we've got a really, um, a really popular fuel energy blend as well. So, uh, beverage have a pretty extensive food offering as well. Um, but yeah, just a, an exciting brand. We're growing around thirty to forty locations a year at the moment. Um, and yeah, one of the reasons we uh, we decided to go with Rebel was just you know we came to the point where we had outgrown our uh, prior point of sale. And so that's kind of what kicked off the whole process of, of looking for a new technology partner. I'm sure we'll get into all the specifics on why we ended up going with Rebel, but um, we wrapped up our deployment uh, just about four weeks ago uh, and we did 135 locations in around eight weeks. So it was uh, it was pretty quick and we're definitely glad to be to be on the other side of it. Yeah, that's 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 impressive, honestly, and kudos to your team for working with us to pull that off. So I, I want you to elaborate a little bit more. I think you just used the term that, you know, our old system, you, you kind of really needed, you know, was outdated or, or you used some adjective like that, but say a little bit more about that. What couldn't it do that you needed to have happen um, so that we, we understand what forced the change? Yeah, so uh, some of the biggest roadblocks we ran into were really just uh, the ability to integrate and so the the point of sale itself was was fine. It had a lot of really good attributes, but when you're getting to that enterprise level and you start wanting to plug in different systems so that you can run more efficiently in different areas, you know whether it be time and attendance or you want to integrate your third party delivery partners or online ordering so that you can have all the data you know in one spot instead of having to pull it from different locations. That was really probably the biggest roadblock was that uh, the pro our prior system wanted to kind of do everything in house, but they weren't really able to execute that. And so that's what really got us looking, you know, from a leadership standpoint, got us looking at a different direction and why we ended up going with Rebel because you guys had an open API, you had existing integration partners, and a lot of those systems that you already in integrated with were. Uh, systems that we were either already using or that we wanted to bring on uh, into our tech stack in the near future. Right, right. And I think, um, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it, one one way I would describe it as well, um, there are some folks that actually do have, you know, different uh, pieces of software running in their establishment, and they may even be connected for some basic capabilities but whether there's a seamless integration, whether you can, the systems are working together, as you said, whether you can see all the data in one place and, and whether that's a kind of a real time thing versus a kind of, oh, we've got all this islands of information and decision-making going on, I think is is a big, you know, there there's, there's sort of a spectrum of being integrated and, you know, you really need a platform that's going to give you an ecosystem that feels like one thing, not like 10 islands, right? So. Absolutely. Yeah. 
So let's let's start. Let's talk about what what does your ecosystem look like today, um, and we, why don't you just walk through each one of these and share with the audience, um, you know, how you're using these things, who some of these partners are, and some of the, the advantages you're seeing in your operation uh, from using these in a fully integrated way. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So one of our most important integrations right off the bat just. Uh, was our time and attendance tool. Uh, we use we currently use seven shifts. And so um, one of our limitations there was again with the lack of integrations, we couldn't put our we couldn't get our sales data flowing over into our time and attendance so that we could turn on some of the more advanced like scheduling tools, real time sales and labor monitoring, um, things like that. Our third party uh, solution was a totally separate standalone system. And so some of our locations are doing you know, 15, 20% on just delivery. And so that's a big uh, part of the equation in terms of an operator trying to de develop a schedule, trying to predict, you know, when sales are going to come in, when do they need to bring staff in and, and when to, you know, end their shifts so that we can manage that, you know, that prime cost effectively. And so, you know, honestly, when, when we were kind of looking over everything, just the fact that you guys already had an integration with seven ships and, and, and what we expected, uh, you know, came to be true was that as soon as we turned on a location, we just, we flipped on the switches and seven ships and in Revel, and it was like data was flowing pretty much instantaneously. So that was really cool to see. Um, the other one, so in parallel with rolling out Revel, we partnered with Patronix and they're going to be handling our, a uh, new loyalty platform. Uh, they're gonna be handling our online ordering and our marketplace management for our third-party delivery partners. Uh, and then uh, an app and gift cards as well. And so um, again, we knew we knew we needed, it was time for us to level up our, our loyalty offering and to get a legitimate app out there so that customers could uh, you know, interact with our brand, order ahead, order online. Uh, and so having that integration right off the bat with Patronix, um, it has been a, a huge benefit for us. Um, Gratuity Solutions is on there as well. Uh, so as we were rolling out, you know, we, we learned a lot about our company during the rollout in terms of operationally how we do things. And we have a fairly unique way that we split tips. Uh, it, nothing nothing crazy. It's just kind of like the, the tip is earned in the moment that it's received. It's We're not doing pooling really, but it, it gets a little, it's easy to say that, but it's hard to calculate it. And so we turn to uh, Gratuity Solutions as a partner so that our time in attendance data and the credit card data from the point of sale when the tip is paid, it can all be calculated and spread out um, as our as our teams, you know, expect it to be. Um, so that, that was a pretty pretty easy uh, integration partner to bring on. Uh, and then Sage is our uh, enterprise accounting software. Uh, we were able to just, um, you know, through an API integration, get our point of sale data for into uh, Sage for, you know, month end accounting, things like that. And so just having that open API was, uh, you know, a huge benefit to, to get everything over there. Our, uh, our accounting team was really grateful for that. Yeah, and I, again, I, I'm I'm going to pat you on the back, but um, to get several pretty large systems like this in integrated and you know running your operation, and really was a period of just a few months. I mean, some companies take six to twelve months just to you know get a new labor tool in place or whatever. So, uh, and I know a couple of these you kind of had working somewhat before, but. Um, we, we just have been really impressed with your ability to embrace these things and, and use them across your business. And, you know, we don't ha have this on a slide anywhere here, but I just want everybody in the webinar to know this is just, you know, this is what BlackRock has got at this point in time. There may be more things in the future. Revel's got over 180 integrated partners. So we really are there for you know for you to look through the market and see what you need and what's the best fit for you, and choose those things. Um, it's a long, long list in our, in each category: labor, loyalty, et cetera, et cetera. So let's move to the top of this slide for just a second. What were some of the other uh, new, fancy, cool things you got from Revel that have changed how you've been able to to operate with your consumers? 
Yeah, so uh, mobile order takers, you know, we, we've been using those for a while, but they were just kind of like standalone iPads. They didn't have the uh, integrated card reader in there. So one thing we really are enjoying is uh, the solution we have with Revel and you guys introduced us to iPort. And so that allows us to do wireless charging so that the card reader and the tablet are all like one unified bundle and you can just plug it into a charging dock, grab it and go. Uh, that, that's been really cool. Uh, we do a lot of, you know, we call it line busting, but mobile order takers, you know, we'll, a lot of our locations have speaker boxes, but because the nature of, of coffee and what we're trying to achieve with speed of service is oftentimes we want to get out there uh, and, and take orders and payments from customers as far back in the line as we can, because it, as soon as those orders hit the KDS, we can have our teams focus on making the drinks so that by the time the customer gets up to the window, it's, you know, Here's your drink. Have a great day. Thanks for coming in, and and that really helps us um, with our operations and speed of service. So that that's been a big win for us. Um, this was the Rebel Data Connector. This is you know uh, I'm I'm the VP of Analytics, and so data is always near and dear to my heart. And so in just from a company standpoint, we've really embraced the the analytics um, performance driven kind of KPIs uh, as a as kind of a, a management philosophy. And so just getting all that data flowing and being reliably pushed out to various reporting platforms so we can just have everything at our fingertips um, has been really nice. Um, and then integrated kitchen display, we use anywhere from six to eight uh, KDS devices in every location, uh, depending on the station, you know, is it to pull shots? Is it to add milk? Is it, you know, your, um, you know, your delivery area is a, um, you know, on and on. And so the system we've been able to create is, you know, you have your point of sale terminals and then that all flows as needed based on the item to the KDSs. And then our teams are able to go in there and see what they need to, you know, at that moment, prepare the drink for whatever step, you know, they're responsible for, and then they can, they can clear it off and keep it moving uh, down the line. So it, it's all worked out pretty well. Cool. Excellent. Excellent. I know you also mentioned anecdotally to me when we were at a prep session that the UI of Revel has just has sped up your training times and, you know, been very comfortable for people to switch over to not. Um, so maybe just give us 30 seconds on that. Yeah. So part of that was just, you know, part of the reason we wanted to st stick with an iPad based solution uh, was just because that's what our teams were used to. And so this was our opportunity to kind of lay out our menu structure and to configure things in a different way to, you know, before, if you wanted to find a certain drink, you might have to swipe through four or five different pages. There wasn't a, there wasn't a ton of structure around it and people figured it out. I mean, they, they were, you know, they got the job done, but when we revealed the new, uh, ordering interface, they were, you know, we got a lot of, of uh, really good reviews because it, you know, it cut down on the number of button presses. It was just easier to explain, you know, how how things were organized on the menu. And we we made a conscious effort to make sure anything, you know, that was on our in-store menu that the the um, the point of sale menu and how you enter orders was in alignment. So it's just it's more consistent for everybody. Um, in some cases, you know, we were rolling this out pretty quickly. They're like, oh, you know, teams were getting a little nervous. They're like, you know, we we haven't had a ton of training on this. What's going to happen? And then literally, you go in, you you'd hand them the tablet, and within a few minutes, you know, they're showing us how it works. And so it was it was pretty neat to see, uh, you know, our our staff being able to uh, to take in and run with it just because it was a better design. Awesome, that's awesome. All right, well, let me. I'm gonna. Everybody loves this question, of course. You know. I don't, you may, you may have the best crystal ball out there or you may not, but still I'm curious um, if we look at the next slide, there's a, a few of the outcomes that you've already talked about, but what what are you thinking about might be on your next list in terms of things that you are gonna wanna bring into play? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're fairly early in our roadmap as far as technology adoption, you know, just getting the, you know, the point of sale that we wanted, that's the foundational layer so we can turn all these different tools on. You know, we've got Patronix rolling out. We'll, we'll have our new loyalty and online ordering going here in the next couple months. 
Um, but really, if you look beyond that, inventory management is a huge uh, item on our list, something that we want to implement. And we've got to narrow down really to, to, to one leading candidate. Um, and you guys are integration partners with them already. So it was, you know, as I looked at the list of inventory management, you guys had several that, you know, will probably work fine. But we, as we narrowed it down, we, we kind of figured out what um, – Point is, we had the option, right? We we didn't have to just use something native. We could bring in any solution that we wanted to. But that's going to be the next heavy lift for us, just getting inventory management stood up. Um, I think further down the road, uh, I like how uh, you guys have a very easy and deployable solution for uh, self-service kiosks. I see that in some of our busy lobby locations is something that we're going to be testing out just to help augment labor a little bit. Um, and and just um, and it's something where it's you, you don't have to order some other standalone you know really expensive device. You can just you set up your iPad and the stand and have the payment processor and a printer, and it's it's really easy to deploy. So we'll we'll be looking forward to that. Um, probably some integrations with our digital menus, you know, from the point of sale, whether it be you know marketing efforts, price updates, things like that. Um, we talked a little bit about AI. You know, is it ordering at the window? What could all that look like? I, I see potential for that, um, but honestly, we're we're so early in it, and just um, the fact that we have you know uh, the point of sale partner we want to turn on the integrations. That's kind of what our focus is for the next several months. Right, it's a great list. I want to call out two, and I'm only going to mention these because they're already in the question list. So I'm just going to um, take them out of of your list. You mentioned kiosks. Um, somebody asks, what kind of kiosk does Revel have in the in the questions? And so we do have kiosks. They use the iPads, so I would call them, you know, they're in certain environments with not overly complex menus. They're awesome. They're at a, a re very reasonable price point, very easy to implement. We do have third parties that do large format kiosks, like the things you'll see in a McDonald's or you know, um, some folks that are doing that, but they're obviously significantly more expensive. So uh, we can integrate to those or we can do the native type of thing that uh, Derek was talking about with the iPads. And the other one is on the AI front and specifically with voice um, type learning uh, methodologies. It's early days with that, but we all know it's coming. And Revel does have a partner uh, and we actually have a handful of sites in that are doing uh, voice AI at the drive-through um, don't have a lot of traction in terms of results on that yet. Like you know, we're only a few months into this, um, so as I said, it's early days. But it is something we have, and it's something that we see eventually coming. Um, you know, to taking the orders with without a human, and then translating that and feeding it into a POS. So crazy stuff out there that's going to be happening. So let's actually, the questions are pouring in and I'm at about my 15 to 20 minute time zone. So we can go to the next slide that's just got some value uh, props here um, that you guys can look at while we take the questions. But Abby, why don't you start feeding us? Uh, we, we had some questions come in before the webinar and, and several live now. So let's start hitting those. Yeah, you got it, Chris. Thank you so much to both of you. Uh, we are going to move into the Q&A portion of today's webinar. Um, as a reminder, you can still ask questions, so please do. We've got a bunch in the queue that we're going to start getting to now, but that doesn't mean we can't get to more, so please feel free. Uh, and I guess I will start here with the first question. Um, what impact do you see LLM models having on customer interactions at the point of sale? Are you currently working on integrating LLM models within your POS platform to streamline, automate at the counter and drive through customer interaction? So that, that's actually AI voice. That's what an LLM model uh, is. That's what they're referring to. Okay. And so uh, the answer to that is yes, we are. We, we've got a partner that is doing that today. Give us a buzz if you want to talk talk about that. Um, but as I said, it's it's early days, but it is possible, and it's going to be very exciting to see how you know how the how quickly the accuracy kicks in on that, and also what kind of formats it does and doesn't work for. I can see in the early days that certain types of menus will be super conducive to this, and uh, other types of you know more complex or 
uh, too many variations with modifiers and things that it, it'll it might it might take longer to get there with this, but um, it, it's coming. All right, great. You guys talked about this a little bit already, but can you expand a little bit more on what role handheld devices are going to play moving moving forward? Yeah, let me, I'm going to toss it at Derek first, and then I'll maybe give a little more color on what Rebel thinks in this area. But Derek, do you have any future ideas of where handhelds may may do other things in your operation? I mean, besides order entry and line busting and capture and payment, I mean, that we're, we're really, um, you know, we've embraced that a lot. I, I think as we start integrating some of these other tools like inventory management, you know, those will be on a handheld device. I'm sure the order counts, uh, inventory counts, things like that, uh, learning management systems, things like that. Um, but yeah, in, in, in terms of just capturing order and payment, um, we're, we've already gone pretty, pretty deep into that in our operations. Yeah. You're all, you're all in already in some ways. Listen, across the whole restaurant industry, obviously we're seeing in table service restaurants, more of that in the U S you know, Europe's been there for a while, but uh, much more of that. I think we're going to see more and more of this. Again, we need tech to make things more efficient. We're working on actually having a whole line of handheld devices at different price points um, so that folks, you know, if you're a, a large table service restaurant and you got 25 servers, um, you know, how can you do that cost effectively instead of paying, you know, 500 plus dollars per, per device? So that that is something that we are working on. Um, uh, I also think that, you know, a day will come when um, we'll want consumers to use their own phones to do some of these things, or possibly the employees to use their phones to do some of these things. There are pros and cons to that. Uh, there are ways that you've got to manage that. Um, but, you know, for instance, if, if somebody is walking into your lobby and they can walk to a kiosk, there's no reason they can't also potentially order off their phone, maybe even without having to download your app. Not that you wouldn't like them to download your app, but consumers aren't going to download an app from every single restaurant they go to. So how could they still use their phone to order? So the, the, the game here eventually for consumers is choice. How do you let them do it however they want to do it? Um, and we're going to see that play out in the next couple of years. It's, it's already started. I'd say we're kind of halfway there, but not all the way there yet. Okay, great. Uh, do you use XT for online orders via your website? So Derek, who are you? Remind everybody, XT is, uh, Revel does have an online ordering product. Um, it, it really is more for chains of probably 50 sites and less. BlackRock's obviously much larger than that. So remind the audience who you use for your online ordering. Yeah, uh, we're gonna be using Patronix. Uh, for that. Okay, great. Um, the next question I have here is what kind of kiosk system is available for Revel with large format screen like I've seen for Clover and other POS systems? Yeah, again, so we can use the iPad uh, for a kiosk and Revel sells that directly. And we have three or four different partners that have large format kiosks and just call us and we can share with you who the large format folks are. Or I think I think our team sometimes follows up on these questions and we'll we'll answer you back with that directly. So wonderful. The next question here in the queue is what mobile app do you use? And do you use BI for reporting outside Revel? Yeah, so uh, again, um, Patronix is gonna be handling our app. So they're gonna have our app and our online ordering as well. And then our uh, they've got a product called Marketplace Manager for third-party delivery. So everything's gonna flow through there and then over to point of sale, Revel. Um, in terms of BI, uh, we use Power BI internally uh, quite a bit. And so, um, yeah, with, like with uh, an, an example of Data Connector and how it's, it serves us there is we're able to just tie in Power BI um, plug data connector right into that and do all the visualizations and different reports that that, uh, that the uh, ops team and leadership team wants to see. Yeah, and we probably didn't, you and I talked about Revel Data Connector without explaining what it is, but it's it's basically 
a pipe from Revel that pipes out all the data into BI tools um, so that you don't have to go hit APIs or, you know, get tables one by one or whatever. So um, that's what the Revel data connector is. So it is it's feeding um, BlackRock's BI tool. All right, great. You might have just kind of answered this question, but we do have another one in here for Derek specifically. Uh, what inventory management systems are you considering? Uh, our leading candidate right now is uh, Restaurant 365. Um, we've looked at a couple others. We looked at like Crunch Time, um, Cogswell, Margin Edge, things like that. But we, we feel like Restaurant 365 just gives us a lot of different ways we can go with not just inventory management, but you know their accounting platform. Um, they've got a, I believe, a labor uh, time and attendance module as well. So, um, yeah, when the time comes here soon, uh, that's that's likely the partner we're going to be going with. Okay, great. Uh, another one in here. If the power goes out, generators provide backup. If the internet goes down. <laughs> Is there a way that clients are able to resume normal activities and not lose business? This is a great question. One we uh, we get asked still fairly frequently being a cloud provider. It's one of the things we're most proud of at Revel. Every cloud provider has got to consider this and does this to some extent, but we think we're best in class. When the, um, when the internet is down, now if the all the power's out, we're, the system does it is right. If you're unplugged, you're nothing works, right? But if the power is on, but the internet's out, uh, even with a hiccup from a generator, you will never lose your in-store system with Revel. Uh, all the terminals will keep functioning. They will ring up transactions as normal. The only thing they can't do, obviously, is get out of the site to validate credit cards. So you'll have to have floor limits on those that that you allow those to still go through on or not. But beyond that, they keep working uh, on the local area network as a unit, including getting things to the KDS and you know managing the entire site. Um, some of our competitors kind of keep each terminal running, but the whole network doesn't work. Their KDSs don't work. Um, but you often for our customers actually like they'll be running the restaurant if the internet just like at your house, right? If the if the internet's down for 20 minutes or two hours. The restaurant won't even know they'll just keep going and then it comes back on and then we catch up in the cloud and the restaurant never even knows it happened so um we're pretty seamless on that front and and, and proud of that sort of offline capability all right fantastic I, oh i'm sorry I, go ahead i can uh we we've tested that a few times already and and uh <laughs> it's it, yeah we, we we didn't really notice any disruption of service um, with our prior point of sale partner. If something went down, we we're you know down to cash transactions, but we've we've had to rely on the um, offline mode from Rebel a few times already, and it's come through. Great to hear. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, what about integration with DoorDash and other online delivery services that integrate with the Rebel POS? Yeah, so that we're we're integrated with all of those. Uh, Revel can sell you the the actual rails. Sometimes you get the rails through somebody like Pictronics, which is like back BlackRock has done. So there's multiple ways to do that. But yeah, we're integrated with all the three PDs, and maybe even more importantly, the way we handle them is, is very slick in in our uh, application. We actually have order management queues. You can see all of the orders across the queues, or you can see them all together. You can prioritize them into your kitchen. So we have done, knowing that there's a lot of different channels for ordering now, we've spent a lot of energy trying to make it easy for the site to understand what's happening so it's not a zoo um, with, you know, again, islands of information, so. All right, fantastic. Um, can you both talk a little bit about how best to keep up with the rapid growth and change of technology, especially as a small business owner without IT and other support? Yeah, I'll, I'll say something here and then see if Derek has got got any thoughts um, for the small guys as well. It, it's, you know, I'm gonna start by being super honest. I think it, it's gonna be challenging if the marketplace is, you know, putting 10, 15, 20 integrations in and that's the state of the art and what consumers expect. 
um, it, it, it's going to be tougher when you're smaller um, and don't have a staff to be thinking about those things. So I think there's a couple keys. One, you need to pick a POS platform provider that's going to partner with you, that's going to you know pick up the phone when you need to talk to support quickly, which Revel always does in less than a minute, that's going to be there to ask questions of, et cetera. So pick somebody that's going to pay attention to you, not just you're just going to be a number after you purchase it. Number two, you probably don't want to be on the bleeding edge with anything. You want to probably pick the things that you need that are the most commonly used things so that everything works extremely well, cleanly, and you know, you're know you not trying to figure stuff out and you're not kind of, again, forging new paths or being more on the bleeding edge with anything. Uh, and then third, um, and this might seem like an interesting suggestion, but when Revel sells to one and two and three site customers, we sell those through a dealer channel. And there's a very specific reason we do it, which is this question. That dealer channel is a more local provider of services. They're, they're usually in your geographic area and have people on the ground. And that way, when you need help because you've picked a new piece of technology or there's something you don't understand and need some training or whatever, you've got somebody that you can go to, maybe even somebody who can you know, show up at your shop and help you. Um, and I think that could be super invaluable. So you can use that dealer as kind of your outsourced IT a few times a year when you need it. Um, and, and we like that model for the small guys. Derek, you got any, I don't know if you've got any past experience down market or any, any advice there? Um, I mean, just to echo one of your main points is just um, choosing a technology partner that's going to allow you flexibility down the road and give you multiple different options. Um, and again, we looked at a lot of different point of sale providers for before we made our decision and just being able to stay flexible because we don't know what the future is going to hold, um, but we're confident we'll be able to adapt with that no matter you know what technology down the road we do want to adopt. Um, All right, great. I have another question here that's uh, about internet outages. Um, are you guys using a cellular failover for those internet outages? And a little bit of clarification on that question. He's wondering specifically about the credit card processing. Yeah, yeah. So there's three choices there, right? You can do what I described, which is not have failover for credit cards and just have floor limits on the credit cards. Or you can use a failover like cellular here or multiple. You can do two or three satellite. There's, there's ways you can put in levels of redundancy there if you want the credit cards to still be off while your while your internet is down. All right, great. Yeah, well that uh, oh, sorry for BlackRock I, for BlackRock I would say yeah we when we did the point of sale rollout we uh, we built in some hardware so that in particular for our locations that um, had more frequent internet outages we can switch to a, a cellular backup if needed but we we do have the offline mode as well just so that the the store can still function. Yeah. All right. Well, that was an incredibly robust Q&A. Thank you both so very much for your time today. Uh, that concludes our webinar. As a reminder to you all in attendance, you are going to receive an email when the on-demand recording of today's event is available. And so on behalf of our sponsor, Revel Systems, thank you so very much for joining us today, and we hope you have a good one.